Good evening. This is a special meeting of Design Review Board 2, a public meeting <clears throat> on November 15th, 2012, and it is called to order. Please refrain from talking among yourselves during the meeting, and please turn off or put on vibrate all cell phones and pagers. If you need to talk, please leave the meeting room. Anyone who wishes to speak, including applicants, is asked to completely fill out one of the speaker's cards provided at the table by the front door and submit it to staff. You will be called to present a case or, sp or speak on any specific item as desired. Anyone who wishes to be re-noticed about a project must completely fill out one of the postcards provided at the table by the front door and submit it to staff to receive notice of subsequent meetings. Current design review board agendas are available by visiting our website at www.ci.glendale.ca.us. A handout describing the procedures of the meeting, possible board decisions, and DRB reconsideration and appeals is available at the table by the front door. Please note that appeals must be filed within 15 calendar days of the DRB decision date. The chairperson may reorder agenda items at his or her discretion. Now we'll have the roll call. Um, board Member Garagos? Here. Board Member Malikian? Here. Chair Zerifian? Here. The report regarding the agenda, posting the agenda, this meeting was posted on the bullet board outside City Hall at or before 5 p.m. on November 5th, 2012. Now is the item three is the oral communications period. Discussion is limited to items not a part of the agenda. Each speaker is allowed three minutes. The board may question the speaker, but there will be no debate or decision. The board may refer the matter to the proper departments and section for investigation and report. Is there anybody in the public who would like uh, to speak on something that's not part of the agenda. It appears we don't have anybody um, interested in that section. So then we move on to item four of the count of the agenda, the review calendar. Uh, first is staff announcements. Uh, do we have any staff announcements? Doesn't appear that we do. Uh, there aren't any information items, and that moves us to item C, uh, the design review case for tonight. Which uh, is? I don't have any cards. Anyone going to speak? Okay, if if you want to speak on this item, even if it's an agendized item, please fill out a speaker <coughs> card and provide it to the staff, so that you can we can record that information and you can be called up as as required. So the the only item on tonight's agenda is a proposed. Uh, new automobile dealer, automobile dealership on nine lots located at 1101 South Brand Boulevard. The applicant is Robert Plant. The property owner is Hutchinson Limited Partnership 2. This is a first time submittal as final review. The um, summary of the project is that this is a 2.27 acre site with two existing buildings on the property, both of which will be demolished as part of the project, there's an existing dealers, um, parts warehouse and service facility on the southerly portion of the property. There's a service facility and showroom at the northeast corner of the site, right at the intersection of Brand and Chevy Chase. These structures will be demolished to make room for the new 47,977 square foot building that will ha house the showroom the offices, parts counter and storage, and vehicle service garage. The first north-south public alley west of Brand, which is just now on the, uh, towards the west side of the site, will actually be relocated. It'll be vacated and relocated to the further west uh, of the property. Right now the alley bisects a portion of the site and that will be all the way onto the west side of the site. It will be moved all the way to the west side of the site. The, a total of 174 parking spaces are provided on the property and this will meet the parking requirements of the city and provide inventory parking for, or additional parking will also be provided on the site to provide inventory and sales display parking, both at the ground level around the building and inventory parking on the roof of the building. The existing building at the corner of Brand and Chevy Chase is about 8,900 square feet in area. It was constructed in two phases. The rear westerly portion of the building is brick and was built in 1946. The showroom area was designed by Charles Wong and was added to the east side of the building in 1959. This 
structure has been evaluated as part of the environmental review process and a historical assessment has been made of the building to determine whether it has a potentially significant impact resulting from its loss and the assessment found that it was not eligible for either the Glendale Register or state or national register as a historic building. The project site is surrounded by uh, on three sides by Brand Boulevard primarily and then on the north side by Chevy Chase and on the south side by Palmer. The property is zoned CA commercial auto which is primarily designated for automobile related uh, facilities such as uh, dealerships like this. There is CA adjoining the property to the west and there are then there are some commercial uh, residentially zoned properties further to the west. Properties north and south are also zoned CA commercial auto as well as the properties across the street. The property the project site is essentially level although there is a, a drop of a few feet from Chevy Chase down towards Palmer. The, I'll, I'll come up to the, the dais now and go over the site plans in some <coughs> detail. The existing showroom building and, and service facility is up here in this area. Then there's another service facility and parts building down in this area. Both those are being demolished. For the new building that will primarily be in the center of, this, of the property, the showroom for the new building will, will face Brand Boulevard. Service entrance will come in off of Palmer. And then the service bays will basically be back here on the, on the west side of the property with a service entrance off of, off of Chevy Chase and then more service doors shown um, in, in this drawing to provide access to the new public alley on the west side of the property. <coughs> Service uh, vehicles, either waiting for service or waiting to be picked up, will be either in the service department itself or uh, stored on the roof. That is the that's the current plan. Uh, some of the parking on the on the ground level is designated for customers and employees, primarily customers. But much of the ground uh, level area, as you can see here, is going to be inventory display, and then much of the and then some of the roof area is also devoted to inventory. And, and sales. This is generally a one-story building, but there is a mezzanine area that will be provide some office space up above the parts and showroom portion of the building. For orientation, this is this this aerial photograph shows the existing uh, showroom and service. Then the other service building down here on the south side of the property. The project site ends basically on this line here and it's everything east of that line. This building is not part of the project site. That is the Lexus uh, Auto uh, Car Wash. This site here is not part of the development of the site but it is used as employee parking for this property here. Uh, during construction some of the uh, service needs, the service needs of this project will be provided at an off-site facility separately approved on uh, uh, West Cypress Street and sales will occur on is proposed to occur temporarily on this site for Ford while the showroom is under construction on this site. The elevations show the the, the different frontages. The east elevation is the side that will be, will be facing Brand. The north elevation is facing Chevy Chase. The west elevation shows you these service doors that will be facing the alley. And then the, the south elevation is the side facing Palmer. This is an entrance to a, a car wash area, car washing area inside the building. This is a service door. And then we have the, the customer service entry and some of the showroom appearing here. Uh, and then we have the renderings or planimetric views that show you, give you a, a representation of the building. This area here is not actually an office or occupied space. It's, it's it's been described to me as a light well to get light down into the service area. This is out facing the. I can't see which. Which I'm sorry. This 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 feature here. It's not an office or anything. It's just a light well down into the service area. It's 
and then the intent is the parking occurs up here but you can see there's no roof there's no there's no habitable space up there it's not enclosed in any place up there There is going to be a five foot wide landscape strip along Brand and along Chevy Chase and a portion along uh, Palmer. In addition, the applicant has proposed to provide some cutouts or pockets for vines to grow on this facade of the building. That wasn't pointed out in the staff report, but um, I, I should bring it to your attention. This will help soften a bit the, um, this, this facade of the building here. And then there are a variety of uh, the variety of trees and shrubs proposed for the landscaping is, is shown on the landscaping plan here. A little over five percent of the site of the parking lot is landscaped, and five percent is required, so it does meet code in that uh, for landscaping. The building, in terms of mass and scale, is a rectilinear form with a large portion carved out at the southeast for the service area and a small portion carved out at the extreme southeast corner to set off the front showroom facade to help it stand out a bit more. This mass is punctuated at the main entry to the Ford side dealership and a rectangular window punch out at the west or rear of the building. The front portion of the building is almost entirely glazed for a transparent look into the showroom while the back half of the building is solid uh, in the service area. The contrast of solid and void is felt is deemed by staff to be successful in breaking down the building visually, even though the form is simple and consistent throughout. The building is two stories tall in in height, but one story tall really in function. Although that there is that small mezzanine area, uh, the total height is 32 feet six inches above grade. The vast majority of the build, that's the tallest portion. The vast majority of the building tops out at the parapet, which is only 24 feet tall. There will also be light poles on the roof, and they are limited by code to a maximum of 16 feet. The floor area ratio for the, for the project is 0.48, where the, um, the zoning in the area actually allows a maximum FAR of up to 3.5. So this is well under the allowed floor area ratio. Lot coverage is 42% and there is no standard for maximum lot, lot coverage in the zone. In sum, the building massing is simple and straightforward. It's complemented by some simple modern materials. The different functions of the building are differentiated with material changes, with some changes in plane which helps break down the simple building into two or more readily uh, readable elements. The glazed areas that characterize the showroom at the front are punctuated by metal panel elements primarily at the main entry. The high quality metal panel system at the showroom transitions to a corrugated metal on the south and north elevations then to stucco with reveals and CMU with some patterning. These simple moves complement the overall building design by breaking up visually and functionally. Entries are all glass on the storefront facade with the main entry to the Ford dealership highlighted by a tall metal panel which forms a nice bow in elevation as viewed from north to south. Finished materials include aluminum storefront, metal panel, corrugated metal panel, stucco, and CMU. These simple modern materials are high quality at the showroom with the utilitarian stucco and CMU employed at the service and parking building portions. The majority of the site will be paved with asphalt, but the driveway entrances will be decorative stamped concrete. The roof is flat with some modest variation in parapet height at the entry and at the rear glazed feature attached to the roof access portal. There is going to be a transformer located adjacent to Palmer Avenue within a metal enclosure. The, the backflow preventer is along uh, out on the Chevy Chase frontage and we're re recommending that it be painted green and not red. As noted, there are going to be some lights on the roof and we're recommending that they have cut and the applicant has agreed to uh, use some cutoff fixtures, although the details of the lights themselves are not yet finalized. In sum, the materials utilized are high quality contemporary materials 
for the showroom and utilitarian F for the service and parking areas, the use of materials re reinforces the project design in an appropriate manner. There are three wall signs proposed on the Brand Boulevard frontage where two are allowed. The extra wall sign requested will be the subject of a separate sign variance by the applicant. They have not yet submitted that application. Wall signs are also located on the Chevy Chase and Palmer frontages. The wall signs are all channel letter construction with the exception of the Ford sign, which is a, uh, a, an, an, an oval can. There's also a, a, an accessory ground sign proposed for the Brand Boulevard frontage, approximately 35 feet tall whereas uh, automobile dealership ground signs can be up to 57 feet tall. The signs all appear to be of high quality and in a style and materials that complement the building. The project is a simple contemporary design appropriate for both the Ford and Lincoln dealerships that are proposed to occupy the building. It's well placed on the site and it has complementary landscaping with the uh, one condition of approval, staff recommends approval. Do you have any questions for staff at this time? That completes my staff report. Um, yeah. hey, just, is there a material board? Yes. One other question. Good question. I'm not sure if there is a material board. Oh, there's a material board, sir. And does the does the ground sign have to come back to us, or that's uh, separately? I do not believe the ground sign has to come back to you. I believe the signs would only have to come back to you if they proposed a sign program. They're not required to propose a sign program. Sure. You need to speak in the mic, but uh, we can we can talk about that. The other material is a charcoal corrugated metal two and a half inch corrugations um, I do well no that's fine uh, I have some questions for staff uh, you mentioned that this is a final submittal yes okay um, there are several plans that have different information on it and they all say draft or concept plans so which are we looking at as far as final plan do you know of? and also do we ha did we did they submit any sections of the building I don't believe that I don't believe that they've submitted sections. The only area that I'm aware of where there are significant differences between sheets are on the site plan. This is an earlier version of the parking lot showing this parking configuration. This is a more recent version of the parking configuration where mo more of the area on the roof is devoted to required parking. That's why these spaces are numbered. And then more of this is devoted to inventory parking. So which are we supposed to look at when we're looking at the site plan? The you should plan? be looking at this for the site plan. So what we have is not even, it's not, we have to throw that away? If it's not consistent with that, you will. I'm sorry for that. Okay. You have a good yeah. for you. So I think at uh, this point we'll open the public session. Mr. Robert Plant, would you please come forward? State your address and name and address. My name is Robert Plant. I'm at 610 South Main Street, Los Angeles, California. Um, I'm the designer for the project. Um, in December of 2011, I submitted a design package to the city. Uh, basically, it was three buildings at the site. The alley bisected the three buildings. We had a separate service building to the back, a separate parking structure, and a separate showroom. In our first review with staff, they suggested we combine the building into one. They suggested we move the, the service bays as much as we could away from the residences, which were um, it would be to the west, northwest corner. The southwest corner was the car wash for Lexus. So we we made those concessions. We worked with the city, which was very helpful, in relocating the alley. Uh, the original alley, or the existing alley, currently is 15 feet wide. The new alley that we're proposing is 20 feet wide. We had to go to... There are no alleys right there at that location. There is an alley. I 
I did not see one. I, w I was just there, and there was a fence, and there's parking lot. Uh, Jeff will point it out to you. That's the alley, but it doesn't really it doesn't really look like an alley, but it is there. Well, there there is no alley in this location. Yet. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, this was this, the that's, but he's saying that there is an alley, but the alley is here. You're yes. relocating it to this location. That be, that's part of the project. Right. Correct. Okay. That's okay. Yeah, and the current alley is 15 feet wide. It'll be 20 feet wide at the back so that it's easier to make the transition into the back alley. Um, we've also given up another seven feet. When the alley makes a left-hand turn, um, we had to give up an additional seven feet so the alley could be expanded in that direction, in the, in the left-hand direction as you Do go Do you want to come up and explain? Sure. Because I'm not following you. Currently, the alley goes through here and goes back. We're taking it 20 feet wide, and then this alley in the future is going to be expanded also, seven feet. So we've given up seven feet on this side of the property also. So we've given up five along this side, seven on this side, to expand the alley so that it could eventually be 20 feet in both directions in the future. Currently, the car wash, when it was put in, they expanded it over four feet, I believe. And the future homes on this side will set you because what you're saying is the alley, uh, first of all, uh, can you pick which site plan you want to work with so I can this concentrate? Okay. So this one, right now it says 20 feet from here. Yep. But then the building jogs back right at the 10 foot line. So the 20 foot is there. So if you're adding 7 foot, this building should be back here. So that's why I'm kind of confused with what 7 foot you're talking about. We worked with the city for over a year, and a lot of changes were incorporated. We had all of our drawings submitted, and somebody went, oh, we're expanding this alley, so we had to give up another 7. So, so right now, let's say if this is the 20 foot mm -hmm. that's coming in, this is the 10 foot, so they're saying that they're going to add 7 more foot. Correct. So center line of this, seven foot out, so this portion of the building has been cut back. Has been cut back. So this is, not, none of these are correct, so that's going to be pushed back. <clears throat> so we've worked for quite some time with the city, massaging the building into the neighborhood so that it was complementary to the surroundings. Um, and still retaining our clients' original objectives of being able to do a small expansion and to accommodate his current business at this location. Uh, one of the elements that Jeff had mentioned initially in his presentation was incorrect. Um, when the building is initially, when we first take possession of the property, we're only going to tear down one of the buildings. We need the, the use of the existing showroom as part of the service. Um, our service customers will come in and they'll drop their cars off at that building. Then the cars would be ferried over to another building on Cyprus, which will handle the service during the construction of the project. Which building would be that one? It would be the showroom. The existing showroom is currently right here. It's 17 feet off this that building. So it's a that's right. Yeah. This show our new building comes right up like that. This building we need to retain for service. This one we're knocking down right away, and the new building will be under construction for about 18 months while this is being used. And then when this is finished, this gets knocked down. So when it's all done, they'll both be gone. But we'll have to move into here before we can take that one down. It's very critical to the operation of their partnership specialist in car dealerships. I've been a facility architect at Galpin Ford for over 10 years. Um, this particular dealership specializes in service, so service is crucial in how they operate. In the original design, it was basically designed around service. Um, the main building, the service building, was going to be built before he even moved there and so that he could move his service in and then move his sales operations and parts operations in. Uh, that didn't work out. We had changes with the city, changes with the tenant, I mean with the owner of the property, we ended up going to a single building. Uh, but again, the service is critical to how he functions. We've gone to great lengths 
to figure out how he could operate as service store or franchise while this building's being built, which is pretty tricky. And the city's been very helpful in accommodating us in that, that area. Um, one of the issues that staff had was the south face of the building. Um, this particularly was the hard edge where the service functions are typically in a parking in traditional California service bays are called California stalls and most of the service bay is exposed. Um, in this location we're enclosing it and we're parking on top of it. One of the advantages to that is you contain your, your sound. Um, if you have some noisy operations going on, you can roll the roll-up door down. You can do you know some heavy uh, tearing apart of a pro of a particular vehicle for using a lot of air hammers uh, to pull a, a, an engine apart. Um, one of the disadvantages architecturally is you have a hard edge wall. We're proposing that we plant vine pockets on that edge, grow the vines up on that side. I've done that in other locations in Los Angeles, which have been very successful in softening it. So you end up with a green edge of the building um, as opposed to just a hard, blank concrete wall. Um, we've also spent a lot of time trying not to come to the board with any variances. Um, we work very hard with Jeff trying to mitigate our parking issues on the property. We work very hard trying to work out the landscaping. That's why you're noticing there's <coughs> several changes in the plans. Those again were all, we kept going back and forth with staff. Um, when the project was submitted, we submitted it under your old planning guidelines. In trying to work with staff, we're now complying with the new guidelines and which in are, doing that we've gotten away from the variances. What's the difference between old and the new? I don't remember. Is that a huge particular difference? difference? We should know. Uh, under the new guidelines, they're allowed more more sign area for one thing. Um, actually, more numbers of signs, but somewhat smaller area. Um, other than, and they're allowed. I think a slightly reduced amount of landscaping in the um, parking area. I don't think that there are any other significant differences for an auto dealership. In the original design, we had three foot landscaping. Now we have five. So we gave up two feet around the building in the new variances, trying to stay away from the, I mean, trying to stay away from the variances with the new planning guidelines. Uh, um, uh, sorry, side note, is there a timer going on? Or <laughs> seems like we have. Okay. Um, <coughs> We've also increased the size of the alley. We've made better turning raises for the alley, trying to improve it. Right now, currently, it really doesn't look like an alley. We agree, but it is an alley, and it's very, very tight. Um, um, I think probably your time is up. Oh, is that? Yeah, okay. <laughs> I think probably we're uh, very clear about the design and the, the four sides of the building. I had one question. If you, you do, you guys have. Oh, go ahead. Question. Uh, I, I like to know from a design perspective. Uh, I noticed that you have three different heights, and it starts to kind of drop down slowly here, comes around and goes back up again. What's the intent of that kind of various heights? Um. Can you live with one height? We could possibly live with one height. The, the issue is we have a very large building over a sloping site, and we're trying to accommodate the different elevations on the site, as well as rainwater management. What we were finding on the inside of the building when we went to one height was we would have uh, walls around the building that are seven and eight feet high, and normally the walls are 42 inches high. So that's why we had to look at trying to step it down. You'll, if you look, I'll show you up here. The whole building is designed in a 3D model CAD program, so this is accurately depicted. There's actually slope going down for rainwater management. This slopes all the way down. That's a low point. That's a low point. The wall in this area is getting, I believe it's five and a half feet tall. Up here, we're at 42 inches, which is minimum. 
and we ran into problems in this area, so we started looking at dropping the facias versus making higher, bigger masses. We we're trying to step it down. The residential building behind it is over here, so again, we tried to carve it down so it weren't so high against it. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so I think probably that will conclude your part, and we can probably start listening to Mr. Stephen, no, or Steve Buzzjagger. Gentlemen, thank you for meeting tonight. Um, I just want this thing built. <laughs> I'm running out of, and we've been working on this for a couple of years now. Um, I honestly don't know what's what's taken more time working with Ford Motor Company or working with the city of Glendale, but um, I, maybe it's a toss-up. Um, we really have. I, I've been in business here for a long, long time, and uh, my family's been in business here since 1970. I'm a Glendale resident. Um, I care about the city. Um, I still want to be in business. Um, I, I'm running. I'm getting to the point where I'm at the end of my lease, um, and I've got to start building pretty quick here. Um, I guess I'm just pleading here um, for, uh, for an approval. Um, we, we've really taken a lot of time to try and make it as nice as we can uh, and make it fit into the neighborhood. Uh, my first meeting, or our first meeting, was with Jim Starbird, I want to say, oh, two years ago. Um, and, and he was so excited. He called the current facility the biggest eyesore in the city. Uh, so he was happy that somebody was going to go in there and, and, and improve it. Um, I really didn't think it was going to take as much time and effort as it, it's taken. Uh, but I think the product that we've come up with is, is excellent. Um, it, it, we've made many, many changes. We've, we've tried to, we've adopted the new, uh, the new code with the city because we thought, you know, that we could, uh, 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 it'd be easier to comply with and, and get through it. Um, you know, I, I'm not a fan of trees and car dealerships, um, you know, but we put them all in. Um, parking, as you guys know, is, is, is uh, you know, I, cars take up a lot of space, and you know, we got a lot of cars. Um, servicing cars, we, you know, it's just, we got to park everybody's car that comes in for service, and so it, it's an issue. Um, one thing that, that, that I think that it doesn't show up here that I think should be considered is, is uh, and the question may or may not come up, but um, we have an we have offsite I, I have offsite facilities also. <coughs> the property across the street is mine, um, and, and that will be part of the dealership. Um, we will use that to sell cars out of for the next year. Well, this or however long it takes to build this, um, we'll we'll use that the facility we've leased the the the. Um, uh, you know, it used to be our old Acura store, but we leased it back again, and that's going to be our new showroom, or, or sh our temporary showroom. Um, we leased a property down at, uh, at the end of Cyprus. Uh, it's a 20,000 square foot warehouse. We're going to be servicing cars out of for a year, um, but we we need to use the current Dodge showroom, uh, and it's going to be tight. Um, but that's the only way where we, that's going to be, believe it or not, our parts department, the showroom is going to be our parts department and customer waiting lounge. And then the back part of it is going to be our, our service write-up, uh, all of our service personnel will be there, our service write-up management personnel will be there. Um, and in the back they have, we'll do all our quick service, uh, our oil changes and, and, and uh, uh, front end. Uh, breaks and, and just uh, so that anything that turns quick so that we can get it um, you know I, I, I we've tried really hard to, to make it work so that we can build the facility we think we're going to need and mostly the building that Ford uh, Ford also requires and, and fit it all in so that we can we can operate and not cause any Cause minimum inconvenience to our customer, um, and, and I got to stay in business for while I'm building this. And, and uh, um, you know, obviously the the Dodge is moving into my current facility, so 
and I got to have a place to go. So we, everything's, everything's fallen into place. Um, and, and our customers, which is about 75, 80 of them a day, um, you know, I, I'm trying to inconvenience them in the least, uh, least possible way. So, uh, and then build the site at the same time so that when it's all over, they've got a nice place to come. Uh, so um, we don't receive our cars on uh, on site. You know, our cars from the manufacturer. Um, we we get those are all off site. We, I've got a property down on Brazil Street, down on the other side of the up, up against the river there. So uh, I've got another 50,000 square feet in, in escrow there too, so that I will have even more off site parking. Um, for, for inventory, so it should all fit in. Um, you know that's uh, that's where we where we got what we got going. And I've also got a, a piece of property for more parking uh, at one two three Acacia. I've got another just under ten thousand square feet that will just be parking. Um, so we should be able to fit it all in. Um, you know I, I you know I guess I, I welcome any questions. Any questions? You sort of alluded to it just curiosity sake so the old facility would become Dodge then that's yeah my current sure. Ford store is yeah this this I go back a long way here um, yeah the, the um, I, I, I used to be the the Chrysler Jeep dealer in town and um, when the Dodge dealer um, received my Chrysler Jeep franchise um, they got an edict to either uh, improve their product prop uh, property um, and the Dodge dealer's stepmother Jack Ellis and, and you guys have been around a long time Jack Ellis is who I was leasing my Dodge facility from I'm coming up at the end of my 20 year lease so um, and there plans to work on that building also or, or is it just moving but I'm just curious just, um, as a resident just curious as a <laughs> resident just standing there I yeah curious. um I, I, they're working with Chrysler. Yes, they're supposed to. I, I don't. I, I'm not okay. privy Just to their. Just curious. You were their, standing there. I was asking their, a question. That was their deal. I, I had plans um, being drawn up to, to renovate the current site because I was in talks to um, renew my lease there, and then Chrysler kind of gave them an edict and said, "Hey, you know, you either dump a bunch of money into your property you're leasing now, or find another site." So. Uh, we, the Dodge dealer and I, worked it out to where we're, we're basically exchanging property. So, Thank you. And I, 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 and I'm not the owner of this property. I'm just going to be the owner of the building. So, I, I, just a, a land lease, long-term land lease. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Any more? That's it. No anyway, more I, again, thanks for meeting tonight. Appreciate it. Sure. Uh, if there are no more speakers. I don't have any cards, so this will conclude our public session. And um, I think we can start deliberating if you like. Um, I, I can go ahead and get started. Um, uh, first of all, I want to say um, I'm, I'm glad the corner is being proposed. Changes are being I'm very glad that this is being proposed. So I think it's a, it's a great... Uh, you know, great project, and I think it's going to fit really well within the area. I think it's it's needed. Um, the concerns that I have are um, not uh, not because of the project. I think it's because of the package that we've received, and there's a lot of inconsistency. Um, and some of these inconsistencies, if we clar clarify them, it's going to affect the design of the project. And um, that's where my concern is that what, what am I going to approve and how is that going to affect some of these things that I've picked up by looking at several different site plans that we have. And I'm kind of trying to uh, – I was at the site. I, I've been looking at it since a week and pack it, kind of going through it, and I said I'll, I'll go and visit the site and kind of understand what's around there. And it still didn't clarify some of the questions that I had. Um, and I can go ahead and get started on the site planning issues, and then I'll get into the design of the project, the building itself. Um, I, have, I have three different site plans here that I'm looking at, actually four. One is the landscape plan, and I got one that is A0, 
zero. I got one A00 concept, which is colored. And I got one that is A1.0, which is, which is the um, ground floor plan, phase one. Um, along the alleyway, um, we talked about proposing a 20-foot alleyway that uh, the city came back and said, you know, we need an additional seven foot for the maneuvering, which is understandable. Um, and then the building basically jogs back, assuming I don't have any dimensions on this, but assuming the dimensions that I have on this plan, it says 15 foot 5 inches. And nothing is being proposed along the north, or, or the, I should say, west. the west property line that you have residential, and you went to an extent of explaining how you redesigned the building of lowering that corner because of the residential part, but nothing has been proposed along the residential property line. No walls, no landscaping, nothing to kind of it's just a property line there. So that's one thing. It could be that there is going to be a wall there. It could be that there's going to be a CMU wall there or whatever it is. But whatever you decide that if you're going to carry that alleyway along the side, you have at one side plan you're showing a 25 foot, which is this one, 25 foot 9, and then you have a 21 foot 4, um, kind of a turnaround area, then you're going to turn into a 14 foot. I'm just wondering, is that really what the intent was, to have a 14 foot something width of an alley sliver in the back of turning into it? Now, if that is going to change, is that going to affect the elevation of the building? That's one question. Second question that I have, or something that I think needs to be addressed, you know, if we kind of approve it, let it go, and, and that's something that needs to be addressed, but or we, we bring it back. Um, <clears throat> on this site plan that we have, which is this one, well, this is different than what's up there. That's, that's my frustration a little bit. In this plan, you have a building line that comes down, and you're showing the seven-foot seven foot jog in the back over there and then carries over. Parkings are set along the back and then parkings are along here. But then when you're looking at over, over on this side plan, you got parking going straight across. There is no jog in the building and there is a straight line there. Assuming that this dash line giving that 20 foot there, that means the building sits back. But when you look at the elevation here, this whole facade is shown as one level. And that's another question that I have. Are you pushing this back? Is this staying forward? Is this the right location for this? Do we want to do this kind of a thing and have a line and this whole thing kind of pushes back? Or do we want to carry this the same line? So again, which site plan am I looking at and which site plan am I approving? Um, the other thing that I've noticed on this one you're not showing. On this one you are, and on this one you are. You're showing the trash can, uh, which is for a 47,000 square foot building. You're showing two trash bins there, right on the property line, which I just walked the sidewalk. I, I, you got a five foot sidewalk. Those doors that you swing those open, you got two doors showing. You swing those doors open, you're swinging outside of the, pro the, the sidewalk there. So I think that's another thing that we need to kind of look into and see, are we really pushing putting those right on the property line with the door swinging out over the sidewalk. This thing is about five feet or so. I could be wrong. That's something that I'm not, I didn't tape it, but it looked very narrow here. So that's another thing that I would I want to address. Um, is it sliding gate? Is it over? Or are we going to assume that we're going to push this building back as, as staff recommended? Um, the site planning in the front, <clears throat> all along here, again, we have so many different areas here. Um, you said that you went through an extent of understanding and kind of redu redoing all the parking lots, uh, parking spaces. The And I'm not here to correct any handicap issues, but based on my knowledge, you can't really have a striping like this, so you're going to end up having a striping in the front. The city of Glendale is not going to, so I would recommend you 
checking with the billing department and how you're accessing that. The reason that I'm bringing that up is that if you're going to end up putting a parking here and I'm pushing this on, everything is to the, you know, to the inch. You know, you got a 18 foot, you got a 24 foot, you got an eight, 18 foot. So by the time you start using these handicap um, stalls properly, your, your building is going to get pushed in. You also have this here, uh, this glass that is coming right down to, to the slab right here. There is no buffer, there's nothing. So these cars that are, as they're, as they're backing into, well, on this side plan you have this, but then on, over here you got cars backing right into this. Your 24 foot dimension is going to the building line. And from this point, measuring back 24 feet, this thing is about a four or five foot. I don't even have a dimension for that. Um, decorative element for the entry piece. So I think there's definitely site planning issues. Uh, you have exit doors shown here, kind of coming out. So is this really governs for a kind of a curb landscaping, something there that kind of gives a buffer between the driveway, a backup so people just don't drive right into the showroom, or something happening. So I think it's I think a lot of concentration has gone into the building and kind of planning inside out rather than um, I'm, I'm just going to go over these and then you can kind of go over these things. But all of these are just kind of pointers that I see that ultimately once once it gets adjusted, um, I think it's going to affect the overall elevation or and the building itself. Um, I would also recommend you checking into that five foot landscape buffer. Um, you need a clear five-foot landscape, not just a five-foot landscape. So by the time you're done with your curbs, you're going to end up having a six-foot section, 18-foot, and then a 24-foot. So, so all of these are going to affect the building line there. Um, in, in the past, um, we've, we've, the reason that we ask for certain um, material requirements, sections, perspectives, elevations, uh, floor plans, all of those consistent floor plans, all of those are for us to understand what is being proposed. Um, no section was provided, so I'm not really sure the reasoning. I understand because of the heights and then you have this uh, minimum of 42-inch high uh, guardrail height that it's required, and then you have the slope and so forth. But based on... <coughs> Based on the slope, I understand that you know you have this point and you're sloping down along here. You know, I would understand if you have a 42 inch coming down and stepping down and then kind of carrying over. Based on the way that you've shown this slope process that it's working, and I don't know how exactly. I don't have a roof plan and show the direction, but I think there's there needs to be some consistencies of parapet heights. Um, you know, if you have this breakup, that's fine. But again, don't let it just happen somewhere. Just bring it in, have it. It's a very clean, minimal building. So I think it needs to have some rhyme or reason on these lines, some breakups, some openings. Um, you have a little wall. You have a wall here that it's coming out, and it's just kind of freestanding, and then it just drops down. You know, conditions like these, I think it's really important to make this project really be successful again. Um, you know, you have these bands. I'm not sure what this material is. I've kind of gone through everywhere, and I don't understand what this is. I'm assuming that these are the way it's shown. It's it's CMU, so this is probably another set of CMU wall. So, so being that two different materials of CMU, I'm not sure why these bands are proposed, where none nothing is being con you know it's consistent. You have bands coming on top of this, and then it drops down, and then you have one here and here. So I'm not sure if really you want to go through the expense of adding those if it doesn't make any sense. I mean, if you're going to really use them, go through the expense of adding these lines in, let it carry in a in a consistent line, and and as you come around here, you know nothing is being carried over properly in the same kind of a line because you got the same. I'm assuming it's the same height of a door on this side as you turn on this side, but then your band on this one is coming to the top over here, and then on this side it's dropping down. So, 
So are you changing those bend and the right in the corner, or, or is it going right at the? Um, it's up to him, but I'm just these are these are things no, that I'm just no, noticing. No, let, let him. A lot of what you're doing is rambling. Um, let me tell you no, a few no, things about me, the project. Me. Can you can you please sit down? Can we didn't you call you to come to the podium. I'm sorry, I understood you called. No. All right, I'm done. Okay. Your turn. Um, yeah, I, you'll have a chance to respond. So <laughs> you'll have a chance to respond. Uh, there was a lot there. Um, I think there's some good points within that, within what he said. I, there, it's, I'm glad that you put a little finer point on it. I had a little bit of issues with how that showroom came out, and it actually makes sense when you see the, the backup that there is sort of a, a non-differentiation between how the parking lot comes through, which could be a nice feature, but I think there's a practical issues with how that car backs up. I think, it's, I think, it, I think that's a real issue. Um, in general, I, I do. I'm, I'm in support of the project. I, I don't really have a problem with the parapet heights. I don't. I don't. It's a large building. Um, I'd rather see some variation in parapet heights. So uh, parapet height isn't really an issue for me. Um, I have a little bit of issue with. Um, I would like to see the greenery that you're talking about on the west elevation. I think that's a nice idea. I just wish it was um, uh, formalized in some way. Uh, that could add a feature like uh, panels or something, steel panels or something that could be interestingly done so that the greenery becomes part of the architecture and isn't just weeds on the wall. <laughs> so that would be my issue. I mean, it's, and, and it might be a, a, a means of making the west elevation and possibly even the alley uh, or even the areas you come up street, you know, if that, if there were metal panels so that the 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 vine becomes part of the architecture and doesn't just become something that sort of randomly happens on the wall, which I don't think really supports the architecture. So something that kind of random happening. Um, so I think there's ways of dealing with that, but I think there's some real issues in terms of where the building is actually sitting in reality sense. And I think you hit on those perfectly, like the trash door coming right onto a four or five foot sidewalk. You know, there's there's some issues about that I think that are critical that need to be addressed totally in support of the project, understand that, but I think there is some real life uh, issues in terms of how the stuff is placed in a small sense. So I think those could be treated as a condition. I would have, have no problem doing that as a condition. Um, but I think those are real issues that I think we need to address. Um, I do think it's a little bit of random how that's probably the least successful of the elevations on that one. Unnecessary. So, I think other ways of doing it. And again, I would push for doing panels that could support the greenery in a real architectural way. For some reason, even though it's all glass, it doesn't, <laughs> in some ways, it's not inviting in a funny way because it's so industrial. Uh, almost, almost looks like where you made the Ford, not where you want to show the Ford. <laughs> but I could see in a, in a highlighter evening time, it's, it's an open wall. But um, but I think there is something about how that hits right onto the onto the parking line. I'm support of the project. I think it's good. But I do think those clearances, those kind of everyday kind of issues, need to be addressed. So. Um, when I first saw the the renderings and the project, I, I thought it's a Pretty simple, nice project building. It's a, like you described it, it's a uh, simple rectangle and it's being carved away. And there are some planes that uh, start to kind of give uh, presence to the frontage, to the brand boulevard. And um, there are some nice moves there. But I think all of these comments were very critical and uh, I thought they were really to the point um, and I agree with all of them um, now at this point I like you to come forward and talk about these comments to your answers to these comments without any unnecessary 
uh, ways of characterizing people. If I, if, I'm, if I was very clear, please let me know. With the city, we've probably had 12 meetings. A lot of the plans but up there... Was I clear? Uh, you you're clear. Thank you. The plans on the wall are different periods of time. The entire project is a three-dimensional model. The entire t site was shot by a civil engineer. The corner of every corner of the building, we know the height, the elevation. We actually have hydrology studies on the site. We know very intimately the issues of the site. Every time we would meet with staff, they were going through some new zoning regulations, and they would say, you know, in our last meeting this looked great, but we need to make this little change here. And that has gone on, and that's why there's a lot of discrepancies in these drawings. In the drawings that we have in our computer files, it's a 3D model. Everything is there, I, every I little totally niche. Understand. No, no, I, there's no question about mm. the kind of time and the energy that right. you spend. I, there's no question about it, and I know how, how, how hard it is to address so many questions that come, come your way. Uh, I think um, that's, that's a well understood fact among all of us. Okay. Now, I, th I think we should go through each comment and hear your reasoning and okay. how you would address that. Do you I want mean, to start? For, the, for the interest of time and everyone's. Okay, do you want to call off the yeah, question we can, and I'll we, respond? Uh, I, think maybe I, think, I, think we, like I think before we start, I, I need to know which am I looking at and reviewing. Am I looking at one of the site plans? Am I looking at the elevation or am I looking at the I, model? I think, because they're all different. I think we're going to, uh, from what I understood, if this A00, okay. which is part of our set, that's because that's the only one that shows, this is, shows this the... This is what we're looking at. We should look at so that because that's the that only one that shows the job. Look at this one? That's fair to look at okay. that. Okay, but understand that it's a jog on the first floor and the parking lot goes rectilinear, right? I'm and, just, and that's what, that's what I'm trying to make okay. sure and understand <laughs> which right. are we looking at. So, the, the roof so elevation is I'll put straight. all of these away, and this is what we're looking at. Now, explain to me, am I looking at this elevation, or am I looking at the models? Which the, am I supposed to look at and comment? The elevator, yes, okay. there is. Let me, let, me explain, let me explain to you why am I saying oh. that, and I'm not rambling. Okay. Is that, look at this. See this? You have one jog and straight shot. Look at this model. You got one straight jog, jog. Am I looking at this, or am I looking at this elevation? Look at this model. You have a jog in, jog in, jog out, coming around, around. Look at the elevation. You have a straight, coming straight across, over and over and in. On your side plan, which this is what I'm looking at, I'm coming over straight across and jogging back in. None of the elevations show that. So that's why I need to know, which am I looking at? Okay. I didn't see this package until just now. We've sent in probably that's right. 11 packages. So. Each one of those sheets could be from one of those 11 packages. So there's possibly 45 drawings we've sent into the city. Would it be fair? And, and there's I'm more than happy to make myself available uh, to continue this for next week for you to clean this up and bring one site plan, one elevation, one rendering, one set of material boards, and then I'll be available next, well, well next week. Is uh, as an alternative, we could consider all of your comments. We'll verify what the final package is with the applicant. Okay. And we'll I mean, make sure that I'm everything is concerned stay, about. As long as we need uh, no, to, uh, no. to, I mean, I'm w willing I, to work with this. But I think I think what uh, Mr. Malikian brings up is very important. But I, I think it's it's our our own staff's duty and and responsibility to receive one package, because then anyone can come in and say, well, we we have submitted so many things. I don't know, so. It's all in your court. It can't be because we we need to submit for any architectural review a single package. Sure. Okay. And then one more thing, and, and I'm trying to understand this. On your site plan, 
it shows on the rooftop you have this building and it's a jog which clearly indicates that the building steps out the way the parapet line is on this side plan. Um, you may be, you don't see it here, but none of them have it except this one, which is... No, no, uh, the, this... So, uh, so this actually shows that the building itself is actually coming out besides this. Just the glass pops out. That was a part. So, so this the, line is straight. The front elevation is designed by Ford, and Ford made some changes this to us. This is a straight parapet, not what site plan is showing. This element here pops out. Right. I understand this pops out. Yeah. But see this? See this jog? So I need to know if this line carries over. So I need to right. understand. This plan was done by the landscape. This okay. is the landscape plan. He just simply left the line. Okay, so so, but this, so is, this is this is this is the right one. This okay. fascia up here is straight. Okay, across. all right. Okay, what what I would like to see happen is actually, irrespective of the errors, whatever. You had some very good points, four or five points, and I would like to just go over those four or five points get clarification or any changes that would be required for those points. They're very good points. I want them. I don't want. Want the discrepancy of the plan to not get us no, to no, focus no. on I'm, those points. I, I, I what agree. I'm trying to do is I'm trying to pick and choose which plan we're looking at, and let's concentrate on that one, and then let him okay. comment on. What that. I'm saying is let's just let's go with your points, and then if we can resolve those points, because I think okay. that's what's critical. You made very good points, and I want those addressed. So, so do you want to step up, and then we can talk? Sure. Them? Like the one about just take the one if you want to start. Uh, oh, you you started from the back of the okay, building. Okay, so let's talk about the back. The, the yeah. uh, residential, residential part of it. So the back on this plan, which we decided that we're going to use, I think, or that one or whichever. I mean, we can pick whichever yeah. one. You want. Okay. So in this one, we have this parapet line comes back and jogs back in. We have the seven mm -hmm. foot, as you mentioned. Okay, now on the plan, on the elevation or the model, none of them show that. These so, are much older drawings before okay. we knew it. We knew we had so we have a setback. new newer one. We have those. We, don't. we can present those to you. We have a full pack. Okay. Okay. Is the three D is a three D accurate to current to current design? Do you have the current 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 set of drawings? That's is the only one. That's the only ones you have. No, no, the we elevations. The, do you have any more uh, more recent elevations? I I believe that is correct right there. This kept changing. So so so, so, we so, about later. so so what we have is basically this line is carrying over. On the uh, roof. Above. On the roof. On the roof. Right. No, that's it. Yeah. Right there. No, no. This is this is on it, the roof top. It, it comes back. No, but this is this is on the ground floor. We're talking about the roofs. We're talking about the parapet. This is the parapet line that comes back, right? So so what you have here is correct. We this is correct. Right. Originally, we had it pulling over. Okay. And originally, we had a 15-foot alley. Okay. And we did the design. Okay. Then the alley, we understood, turned to 20. Right. So we pushed it back to 20, and we had this overhang. And can you have the then, overhang in the alley? Then we found out that you can't overhang it. So then we pushed it back to where there's about a foot between the two. So we kept meeting with staff, finding out that so the parameters had changed. There would so be a little there would jog be a, there. So there would be a there little would jog, be a there, jog yes. there. So it would be... Or something like that. yes. So so we would bring this back. Roof parapet or the service on we the alley. Coordinate that niche with this niche over here. But again, we've had so many reiterations. Well, just so we're clear, uh, I'm, I'm, is it the sorry. service on the alley? Which one's on the alley? This is the alley. Okay. So the roof parapet is. Originally, we were yeah, yeah, it well. Projects out projects by, when, by when foot. this was done, we pushed this back, and this was on the alley, the parapet. Right. Right. Then we found out that the alley is going to be going to 20 feet. So then we went, okay, well, we've got this back at 20 feet. Can we overhang it and have? I did the BMW store on town. Can we overhang the alley? We did that at the BMW store, and they said, well, there's a lot of issues with that because of this particular alley. No, you couldn't do it. So then we pushed it back. So at one point, we had submitted everything in, trying to meet this meeting with that design. 
So, so is it 20 feet straight up? Now it's 20 feet straight up. Oh. Okay. okay. All right. So, so wait, now I understand. understand. So there is no, there is no overhang. There is here. no overhang. We're there trying to no still overhang. hold okay, an overhang okay. of a few inches. So, so the block is this overhang. Pop is out flush with the building as well. Okay. We've got the difference between here and here now is a few inches. So there still is a difference between it because we like the okay. massing. Okay. But we don't have the five feet that we originally had. Okay. Okay. All right. Fair. And and what is this? Is this that the, is actually the, the, a stairwell the, that's coming up. So it's not a light well. It's a stairwell. Yeah, it's, it's a stairwell. A, but we we added more light, light into stairwell. it so the natural light comes okay. into the service bay so they're not in the dark. Got it. Okay. So, so there isn't. Oh, is that a door that's Yes. So, so we pushed all of this back so that this. Okay. So so then so so I'm trying to I'm trying to adjust this elevation here, and you have this. So this goes back in. This is recessed. Correct. Right. This would be. This, this could not swing. The door couldn't swing over the right. property line. So this would be plus or minus a couple of inches. Right. So. Okay, so we got that. Please, if you want to come, <laughs> uh, I'll us. Uh, One about it later. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. Now, over here, you said that you lowered this to 24 foot for the residential part. Now, on your perspective, you have a step. So, does that mean this is the 24 and it steps up, or this is the 24 you step down, or the perspective needs to change to this, which is the correct one. The perspective needs to change to where this lines up. And I believe this is actually, in this drawing, it's later. It comes over another seven feet. So this is all that's fine. And so there's, there's not, not a second a, job. The condition will move seven feet over. There's not a second job. There's, just there, there's not a second job. One, one step this in the This jog is no longer there. So this jog is. All right. So that's stuff. Yeah. Um, we talked about these block bands. I think we should just get rid of it if you guys uh, agree yeah, on that. I, I, I think it's just an extra, unless Ford wants it. Uh, because no, no, it does, we, uh, where, we put it in for the planning. We're, we're just talking along the alley, right? <laughs> yeah. And the other alley, side of this is the Lexus car wash. The problem is that, yeah. you know, it, it yeah. just doesn't make sense. you got these lines coming. you got the line coming. It's like it's all over the place. So. Staff requested these lines. I mean, it's fine. Uh, I mean, if you've no, got a car wash right uh, here. I think, I think we all agree that you don't need it. Yeah, okay. so no. And it is a CMU wall, correct? It's all it is a CMU wall. Okay. Exposed CMU wall? Yes. I don't have any material for it, so I'm just kind of helping you. So exposed. Is it a split face or any special kind? I mean, we used to do a lot of split face. I lately we've been going more to just simple precision, which is just a smoother or modern. We'll just go to okay. Okay. No, I'm just asking. For All right. No. Would the direction to staff be to eliminate the bands or either make them more consistent or eliminate? Them? Eliminate. 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 Yeah, I don't think they work with it. I think you're going to have a plaster and the CMU. I think just those two materials are going to be fine. Um, if anything, you could mimic the line with like a two-inch. No. I, I, I think it's going to be a lot more complicated, a lot more costly. I think just get rid of them. That's better. Okay, so the trash bins, the doors are facing the street, which is right. Palmer. And I think it's five. I could be wrong. I don't have any survey or anything, but there, it, it looked very narrow. So those doors, assuming that you got a full trash bin sitting there, these doors are about six or seven foot wide. It, it could be overhead doors. What was that? Uh, if they replace those with overhead doors, if that's not the intent, that would solve that problem? Sure. Yeah. Um, well, if it is, then, then we're going to have like a solid mass or something there, you know, because it's open right now, right? Which I think would look better than that. Nice to have yeah. it Just oh, a right. kind of enclosure. Right now, it's, it's a notch. No, no, no. We're talking about over the yeah. trash bins, right? To yeah. hide the But roll. you can't. I don't roll. think you want to put a 20 All foot. down now. Yeah. So, so, so we'll enclose the trash. And so it would be a roll-up door. Okay, great. And then a band that would hide the. Yeah. A band the, that would hide the the, uh, the box. The box. Well, that would be mounted internally, I suppose, with the tracks. It would be invisible from the street. Right, but there would be, you'd want to have a band that would camouflage it. Like okay. this door. So, so it would be a, some sort of a solid 
piece of something there. It doesn't necessarily have to have a roof. It just has to have a beam. Something that will, you know, whatever. It could be a beam that goes across that way. Okay. I mean, these are just little comments there, you know, just kind of freestanding walls. What if you just did a rolling gate? And you've got enough length here to slide a gate along. Well, you've got... Well, we've got vines. You've got your vines. We've got vines, and you're right on the property line, so I don't know how much of a rolling you can have on that. So... Um, yeah, that's fine. Now, um, what is a excuse me, What is a band? You're going to have the the overhead door rolling up, and it would just be a band going around just to enclose. You need it. something to attach it to, so you oh, can't okay. just kind of just it architecturally there'll be a band that would close. All right. So then the, the other comments and questions that I uh, had were all the parking spaces that we have in the front, which. Well, we can talk about it here or here, it doesn't matter, but um, again, is this going to eliminate parking or are you going to, are you, are we right on to the number that we're required to have as far as parking, so the parkings mm -hmm. need to work the way they are or, or is it something, because these parking spaces, like you got parking number 34 next to the or they're right on their number. They're right on the number, right? Yes. So does that mean that they're gonna you're gonna need to move your building because this this end one doesn't work because you need to have a three foot there so the building gets pushed back. These handicapped spaces need clearances in front. So is this that parking gonna, space is right here. You've got all this room. No, what I'm saying is this. Oh, it's, sorry, it's this open. this this building That's you have open. a structure, right? That's so it's open. Yeah, but you have a structure, right? Just a column. Just on the just on a column. The so the so door. it's open. Okay, so then that's okay. So then what about the access here and then the back up here? Because you've got twenty four foot coming here. All I'm saying is look into this. The, the five foot that you went outside to outside, this is gonna push a foot. This thing. What it's gonna happen, it's gonna affect the, the We used to put curbs around the building. What we've had is lots and lots of lawsuits. When we put the curves, so we're going to zero curves now on our building. But what about the doors we'll that do swinging right into the driveway? That door is to get cars inside the building. That's a car door. Those are four foot doors. Do they, do they open the how many? The here, the real entries are here on the And sides. so the backup from here to here, you got 24 feet? This might be I'm not here to, I'm here, not here, here to criticize the parking. I'm just here to, you know, you go back and you you decide that this parking backup and stuff doesn't work. If it gets redesigned, is, it's going to come in front of us. This is a much so. older plan. This is how we originally were laying it out, and because of the way the landscape works, which was very tricky, we had a lot of meetings with the city trying okay. to get that worked out. We had to rework the parking. This one's much more accurate with the handicap okay. here. Okay. This is just okay. inventory. So if they're a focus, okay. there's a lot of room. If it's an F-150, okay. duly, you don't get as much. But then you would park it on an angle. Okay. Um, Could you just address that, that one idea, though, about right on the drive path? Do you think that's realistic? Over the Usually what we're there's doing, no bollards happening there. We'll probably end up putting some bollards in there. That's one of it. Again, just yeah. would draw something and present it, you kept getting these new your, issues your coming up with the new zoning regulations. Whereas the old zoning regulations, now that was an issue. And originally, I believe we did have a plan on the front. And again, we're very constrained on the sweep a lot going in on this site. We're trying to most of it, but we'll probably end up with bollards in front. I've done that in quite a few stores. Um, <laughs> Well, we're not, yeah, you, you don't have cars parking in front. Where's the landscape one? Uh, this one. Uh, that's, this is inventory. In front of the building is inventory. So your customers aren't coming in there. I, no, I think I have my one question that I talked to you about. Uh, the, the different heights. I, I, I think it's possible to take, a, take care of the roof drainage in a way that 
just don't have one uh, high point and kind of create this five foot tall. Um, you, you would rather not have five foot tall parapets, right? Okay, these bays right here, those are large truck bays. Right. Big truck bays. Trucks could be 12, 14 feet high as opposed to a passenger car that's only that yeah. high. So when those are up eight feet, six, seven feet in the air, we needed a lot of clearance. We requested 21 feet clear. No, no that's in just this that's, area. That's fine, but I think the way you slope the, the roof can be done in a way that you can, and the reason I'm saying this, going back to the same mm -hmm. thing that I said, once you start uh, making a special move by pushing this wall back so that this will kind of read like an independent wall, and then you turn the corner and you push this one up, it loses its strength because, because you're saying the same thing in two different ways. That's why I said if you maintain a single height, your building will be stronger. I agree stronger. with you. Ford Motor you, Corporation you came back and redesigned that on us. To, I, to push this up? They, they changed the materials here. We had the Alucabon running around the corner and back in. No, I, I, I think, and I we think had everything it. is fine, except that this height, by uh, having it right. higher and stopping at the corner, it weakens weakens the architectural strength. Of I agree with you. We had this wall coming across in Alucabon. This here came across in Alucabon over to here. We had a meeting with Ford Motor Corporation at Steve's office. Yeah. No. Ford said they wanted this wall to read like a thin wall. No, that's wall. fine. I think, I think actually that that's fine. If we then it's not the, the look of one returning, it's about the height. That I'm these fine. heights. Yeah. Okay. The, the height differentials start to make this kind of look like... Well, it, it, I'm it just 42 inches here, and I'm higher over here because this is coming down. No, yeah, I, I, think, I think it all has to do the way you um, maintain it, that you don't end up with very um, different parapet yeah. if, you, if you manage to work out the roof drainage in a way that doesn't give you a very shallow parapet and a very high parapet and kind of look like manages to keep the like edges of variation right somewhat the consistent, we'll somewhat. take a look at this one. I, I think down. what really bothers me Numbers. about uh, Maybe what I this is I where it turns right here. About this design is to really take out all of the differences. The only difference, maybe, come up with the median width of height that works all around and no, this the it's the, it's because I think I truly really think that this will be stronger without the this piece here. Is this piece around the, along the edge? I think okay. everything else. So I'm reading it. It's a dark piece. Is this? Oh, you're right, you're right, you're right. This is the Lincoln piece here. So maybe... Could, could you could you review. share your resolution on that discussion? <laughs> uh, on this, yeah. I, I, I like to make it a very strong recommendation or... Uh, a consideration? I, it's consideration, but I, I, it's, I'm very close to make it a, a condition. Okay. I, I truly believe that because, because I think you can, you can do that. You can. The only, the only point. I don't think it highlights it more that there is a difference in height. No, it's see, it see if the difference, the, because, I, because what happens is that it, there is a jog here, right? Mm -hmm. the, the jog is about right. receiving this material and ending it. Once you take it up, it, it just becomes. Uh, I've done that at Jovial Ford in Southgate, and the complaint that the owner had is when he drove around on the roof. You're going like this because what you have to do is you have to get a lot of valleys to suck up that height change, and I got a lot of issues with that. I mean, he complained a lot about that. The other issue we ran into on that particular parking deck was when they parked the cars up there, they had a tendency to park the cars over the drains, and because we had so many more drains versus just simple sloping to the corners because we were trying to collect the water in the corners where so, you couldn't so park the car. You, basically you have a high high point here and slope. We, this has a much simpler slope to it so you just drive around more casually. Yes, you're driving at an angle whereas the other one you're going up and but, down. But so you, even so, because of the length of the building you have to have a lot of crickets to move the water away from the... So it will 
basically do the same thing, right? Yes. You end up with a lot of crickets, and you end up with a lot of internal drains, where we have a couple of, we have some larger drains to the corners so that it drains a little bit more naturally. All right. I guess. And if, I, if I may. Recommendation. On recommendation. <laughs> if, okay. if, if I may, Chair Zeriffian. Sure. You're making a strong recommendation for a single datum line for the parapets, uh, excepting for the kind of the facade piece and the big both element uh, kind of over the where f the Ford logo is over the front door. But if there was sort of two datum lines for the parapets, would that be satisfactory? It's kind of I think the project is so big it could benefit by different heights. <laughs> because I think the concern I have from um, Board Member Malekian was also that the locations where the parapet was changing, you at know, least on the I elevations. Mean, I don't have a problem with changing the heights. I think it just needs to have a, a point, a, point a, proper a, a place where it occurs. Place that, that's what I was to say. Your, your concern was it just changed because it yeah, changed. Yeah, I think if, if it can be minim minimized or, or I don't know. It's, um, so, so, so if we I, put a... Yeah, I, I, I still think that a single height will do this building a lot of good, but Strong like for example, you. right here, you know, you got this drop in the parapet height right at the change of the material, so it makes sense. So over here, it doesn't matter. When you come around on this side, you know, you got these randomly just kind of dropping. So at least now, we're going to have this consistent line. Now, I'm not sure if this line is going to carry over right here. Then you're going to have a raise on the parapet right at the jog that is going back. So it has some rhyme or reason of. You know, the, the, the parapet yeah. will change okay, height where yeah. there's a, a return in the, right. in the facade, an indent in the it facade, or a change in materials so with a return. So I, I we'll try to limit the parapet changes to yeah. either changes in material, changes in plane, or at the alley facade where I don't think we have and much choice. We'll just try to make it come at a, at a reasonable place. Where it happens in strategic locations that make complete sense in terms of understanding okay. the Okay. A strong consideration? Yeah, that's okay. right. Um, so, if you will, maybe we can review the comments and make a motion. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make an attempt here. Um, at the uh, at the parapets, we're going to find consistency of parapet heights while allowing for changes at reasonable locations, including changes of material, changes of plane, or where it makes sense at the west alley facade. We are going, and I actually didn't hear um, if there was consensus on the board in terms of creating some sort of climbing trellis or metal panel system at the uh, at the south facade for the climbing yeah. vines. I'd like to see a, a metal panels to formalize where the greenery is happening. Metal so panels? And when you say or panels, or you mean screen, solid? Or? Screens of some like kind. Like wire trellis? Wire or? trellis, something architectural. Okay. So that the vine is part of the architecture. And we'll have to double check that that Green itself wall. won't become an encroachment. We, we've confirmed that the vines are not an encroachment, but if it's an actual structure attached to the building, it could become one. So if it were an encroachment, um, would we remove that condition? Yeah, it can't be an encroachment. It has to be worked out so it's not yeah, an encroachment. Realistically, it's not so much more. You're going to lose three more inches. That's what I would do. You're going to eat three more inches. <laughs> okay. I think it's important. I think it's important on a large building that, and I think it would do much more for the facade. Okay, well, we'll we'll work with the applicant you know, to uh, confirm the location yeah. of the handicapped parking spaces so that they meet code and and. Uh, I'm not sure if there was any other issue there, uh, Board Member Malikian. Um, well, the, you uh, didn't talk about the buffer. Uh, um, you know, uh, well, yeah, I'm just, so many things. Um, so how are you guys going to review when they build this? What plan are you guys going to use? Well, we're going to have a set of plans that go through plan check that uh, receive the design review uh, approved stamp, and okay. that will be the final set. All right. Um, so then we need to make sure that the plan shows or somehow we acknowledge that there is going to be a jog and the parapet um, plan view or, or the 20 foot setback that we require to have on for the alley. So that's going to have okay. a jog and the, and the, and the actual 
footprint the of, right. the, of the up on the top floor. And then you have the overhang. It's kind of an odd kind of a corner that we're going to end up having, but it is what it is. Um, uh, I do want to have something, some CMU wall planter or something there along the uh, west property line that abuts the residential. If there is one, great. They don't need to put it in. If there isn't, I think they need to have at least a, whatever the minimum is, a six-foot tall CMU wall or something. Yeah, that kind of a, give it a buffer. And, yeah, and then once that happens, then you, they're going to end up having a little shy of 14-foot clearance in that area. So I'm not sure if the tra you know, transportation is going to have any issue kind of using that as an alley, or is it just kind of a one-way traffic kind of a thing? or something that they need to be aware of so okay um, did you want that wall or planter to start at the point where the alley joins into the property and then continue north from that point I, I, I think so yeah. I think at least at that section yeah that's okay, now uh, you, you can see on the screen here we have an existing CMU wall there perfect. so they could build a new then, wall to then, then perfect then, okay then. that was adequate that would be yeah, adequate. That, yeah. that adequate. another another condition I think the board agreed on was to eliminate the uh, CMU banding at the alley right. facade yeah. Yeah, the CMU and banding. then at the south facade oh. where we have the uh, the trash doors We'll replace uh, those with overhead doors. We'll tr if the mechanism cannot, if the if the box cannot be hidden completely behind the masonry wall, we'll put some sort of architectural band across it to. Well, you'd have to because they're not showing anything, so there'd have to be a band. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure in in the full construction there would have to be. They they could probably in make the entire unit be on the inside, have the tracks run on the inside face of the of the CMU wall, and have have a slight recess in the door opening. But what we'll do is work with them to make sure that the, the mechanism the band is would hide the easy. roll. So you would need a band to return so it didn't just look like a roll. Covering the but what, what I've seen is the, the roll will be placed at lintel height where yeah. it would be behind yeah. the masonry right. above the lintel and wouldn't be. It just be. needs to return around the corner. That's Here, okay. here's, here's the section. Here's the, here's the wall. That's the building. Mm -hmm. the, there will be a fascia here that will allow this to be right behind it and have tracks coming down. And this could be a beam, like a steel steel beam or something that connects to the walls and strong enough to hold it. Okay. Or so, so we'll make sure there's something a fascia the or a band across the... Back mm -hmm. need to be high enough so that it read as a band. Yeah. Or some continuous yeah, height. You do is okay. you just... You're going to have the roll above the door. Right. Then as it pulls back to the building, there would be this wall would be high enough so that it read as a continuous line. Okay. Yes. Um, we also talked about some of the backups and some other stuff that, you know, I'm not going to get into uh, because well, I'm not sure, you know, it seems like. I mean, in terms of the backups, I think the applicant clarified that it's only staff driving those cars. It's all inventory. Yeah, uh, I would suggest point. for them to check with traffic and make sure that, you know, and, and I highly recommend some sort of a. Um, protection. protection in front you of know the, the protection can not be, bollards, but something can be a rail a strong rail inside the building too to if there's not enough space because the reason I'm saying this is that staff can make mistakes too and it can be a safety issue you can drive a car if you all of a sudden you, you slip you do something wrong the car goes right into the yeah, there are no, moving there a little beyond the design issue, there. but we could talk to. But it's a safety issue that we're really recommending options that. Options. I, I be think. Thought of. I think it would be a good idea. I think there there are no dimensions. There are no clearances. I think turn around and people driving normal people. I think that's the main uh, main entry point for people to come in. You got that main entry piece. Um, okay. That that itself is is a is a section there that may become a hazard. So I think that that's something too kind of look into. So we'll work with building and safety and the applicant to design some sort of system that would ensure safety at the glass storefront uh, rather than that's installing ballers. So. That's what we recommend and want to yeah. make sure that it's noted. You know, the recommendation. Mm -hmm. As a it's consideration. kind of switching towards design rather than safety and other things. You got, you're going to have, a, they're probably going to have some sort of either concrete or asphalt. 
and they have a finished floor, same level, and the glass comes down to the same point. So you're going to have a finished floor and the asphalt at the same point. So I think there needs to be some sort of a no, you know, but, but there, even so. if it, if you raise it six inches, it won't. I don't think won't do raising six inches is is what I'm going with. I think it's it's some sort of a protection if they end up putting them bollard. I don't I don't think it's the right answer. I think it could be more of a you know some sort of a uh, I don't know concrete pieces or something that has light and not enough not high enough that it'll block the visibility but enough to give the protection and have some separation between for the pedestrian and for cars as well oh, although since those cars are typically going to be parked rather than being moved what you're suggesting is something that would have to be at bumper height or higher which would these are suggestions the transparency I, I that think, they're looking I think for. these are suggestions so I think that's a consideration I think yeah okay. I think I think it's a very strong consideration great um, I think um, yeah um, and I believe all of the conditions and considerations we've just discussed is everything I, that I, wanna, I have right I want to just suggest one more thing that I, I think it would be I, I noticed something uh, the transformer that is being placed right in the corner of the uh, the main entry off of Palmer uh, for the service bay. I think in front of that there's enough room that either a landscaping or some sort of a wall or something, some sort of a paneling, something that can be placed as to block the transformer. I think that would be a, I think a landscaping would be fine. You know, you, you, they're using the a purple leaf plums on one side, maybe they can use the same on the other. I don't know if conduits or any utility issues there may be to place planters so there. Why don't, why don't we make that a consideration once we fine. verify that there are no that's uh, infrastructure issues? I'm about okay. to make a, recommend, a proposal, but I'm looking, and there's two different DRB numbers, so. Uh, Mrs. Zerfian, I believe the applicant. I want to respond. Oh, sorry. Make a small response if you were willing to entertain it. There, there's a. Do you, do you like to approach the podium? Yep. Uh, being that this is a car dealership, if somebody were to drive through the glass, they'd run into another car. There are no people along the glass, like an office building. So you're but asking. Don't, don't people circulate in that space looking at cars and things? Yes, they might circulate, but typically you've got cars lying across the front of them. On the other side of the cars would be sales stations. Yeah. You, no, I, the, I, I, proposing I, your main entry to the lot right off the brand, and you've got people coming in, that customers that are coming in, and there's, you're creating a very tight turn without any kind of a buffer. I'm just... Yeah. You guys are taking the liability, so I'm just... We're here to... Yeah, well, we have that as a consideration, so. I know a good attorney. Okay. So um, you, were, you said there, is, uh, there are two numbers? Different I'm numbers? seeing two different numbers. The, uh, is it 2011-064 or this other one, 1124-123A? It's 2011-064. Okay. Now, I should point out that what you have before you also – it didn't make it into your packet, but I've passed it out to you as a resolution to uh, adopt the certified negative declaration. You, we do if, that first? If before? you are inclined to approve the project, you would do that first and then take action on the project itself. One quick question that I have on this. Um, the size of the building, the existing that 8,900 square foot that is being demolished, is it a two-story or one-story? I believe it's a one-story building, although there could be a, two, a second-story portion somewhere inside. Is it, that's just, a second is that story proportionally, portion to the you look at it, and, and the other one is like 3,300, and you look at the other one, it's like they're almost the same size. So I'm, okay, so just something that curious on those numbers. So I'll move to approve the environmental as it's submitted. A second. Uh, Mr. Malekian? Roll call, Mr. Malekian? Yes. Uh, Mr. Gergos? Yes. Mr. Zerifian? Yes. Can I make the other motion? Uh, you make the other motion. <laughs> uh, we approve the conditions and recommendations, PDR 2011-064. Uh, 
2011-064. With huge hesitation, and I'll explain why hesitation, is because in the past, I appreciate being a, you know, new project, new commercial project. In the past, we've turned away projects that had substantially more information than this project had. We have inconsistent site plans, inconsistent floor plans. We don't have any material board. We don't have any sections. We don't know what site plan. We just kind of went through and fixed everything, and, you know, we're approving. I just want to put that on the record that normally we would put other people through ringer when we get stuff like this. So it's, I don't know if it's, you know, if it's applicant's fault, staff's fault, whose fault it is, but we're here to approve set of plans, one set of plans, not three, four, five different projects that we have to kind of siphon through and figure out which one we're approving. So having said all of this, I second you. Okay, roll call, Mr. Malekian? Yes. Mr. Garagos? Yes. Mr. Zerifian? Yes. I think that's this. Uh, are there any meeting minutes? minutes we have meeting minutes from September 27th. Yes. Do we have enough people? Can't. <laughs> we can't. have only two out of. Does that work? I think this is yours. Two or three? Can two or three present? Right, are you supposed to sign that? I'm not sure. The minutes? What's that? If can. two of the three that were present, I guess they could. That's the majority of those yeah, present, so I think you can. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, you right. could. Have you read and understood? Yeah, I'm, I'm fine with that. Just want to refresh my memory. I'm making a motion to approve minutes of uh, September 27th. Is there a second? Second. Sorry. Um, Mr. Garagos? Yes. Mr. Malekian? Yes. Mrs. Zerifian? Yes. No, oh, actually, I <coughs> abstain. I can't. She's abstaining. <coughs> uh, how can we then approve it? Because there's a majority of those. Uh, who were at the meeting who can take action on it. Yeah, there's two of the three are here. So. Okay. There are no other items on the agenda. Make a motion to abstain. Second. Okay. Yeah, meeting adjourned.